Awesome. Uh, Carlo, welcome to um, Curated Conversations, man. Um, for the guests listening, uh, we're hanging out with Carlo Manapat of Project Dream. Yep. Um, how are you doing, man? I'm doing pr- doing pretty good. Just uh, still got a lot of work ahead of me, even though it's the weekends. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. <laughs> um, we're all kind of facing this heat wave right now in this in this country. Uh, what is it? What is it like today in Maryland? Uh, I mean, it's very humid out here, so <laughs> you can just imagine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think we are. We got an overcast today, which is kind of cool because it's uh, mm-hmm. it's normally like a hundred, um, so it's like seventy four and humid too. So mm-hmm. um, over here in LA, but right on, man. Um, you know, we hang out a lot, we do a lot of things, um, but I wanted to take this opportunity uh, to publicly kind of talk about Carlo, talk about Dream, and then add in. Uh, a little bit of cool stuff at the end of some some other things that you're working on. Um, so, you know, one of the things like um, I want to kind of highlight and talk about is, uh, dude, it's always really cool running into in the cannabis scene, whether it's in Maryland, whether it's in New Jersey, in, in New York, um, and I love I love seeing how our our worlds are also kind of overlapped and uh because it just speaks to the community of cannabis and that's kind of one of my favorite things when when curate and and dream dream work together um so i met you when you were throwing on um the the cohorts right like pre 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 pre-licensing um so what I want to do, like, tell, let, let's, let's get into that, man. Let's, let's talk about, let's talk about, uh, Project Dream, man. What, what is it about? Yeah. So with Dream, one of our goals is to pretty much make Maryland just a more inclusive place, easier place to do cannabis business. Uh, we do a lot of this work as volunteers through the dispensary association. Uh, we're pretty much an affinity group, um, all, uh, people from like the vendor side as well as the dispensary side have come together to to just you know ultimately it was hard for us to enter the industry and we think a little bit of education and some support actually does go a long way uh, when making people a little bit more successful or accelerating uh, a successful launch uh, within the cannabis space right on yeah it takes a lot right and um Mm -hmm. And Project Dream uh, has kind of identified almost all um, kind of elements that you need, right, in the whole journey. Um, and, and that's one of the things that I gravitated towards is um, Project Dream pulling all those people in a room together and just speaking to the values of what it is you need, right, um, for, for the operators. Um, that's cool, man. Um, how are you liking the cannabis space? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's it's fun. <laughs> it definitely can be um, frustrating at times. And, and ultimately, you know, that's where the opportunity is to come in and, and be people to solve problems. And another big part, too, is it does make it exciting. Um, and sometimes it's nice like really um, as well. You know, there are headaches when an industry is brand new. Yeah. Um, that's the other thing that's cool about it too. At the end of the day, this is really just what happens anytime there's like a new um, space, a new piece of the economy, or a, a new technology that opens up. Uh, so, yeah. you know, what's happening in cannabis, uh, and you know, things that happened before when there are opportunities um, that that open up for people. So, so you know, uh, for me, it's I hope it's something where I can bring my passion and uh, build a life out of. Yeah, I think that's important, right? Um, mm-hmm. I love um, when people lead with passion um, because like it all kind of comes down to the intent and why are you doing this? Right. Um, Mm -hmm. And then I love, I love talking about that. Um, Sometimes I feel that as a whole, we take, we move mountains and we take like four steps forward and then 20 back. (laughs) Uh, 
And it's just, uh, you know, with all the markets coming on board, just, you know, injunctions and lawsuits or regulation. I don't know. It's, it's always kind of feels like that. But um, I think it's important to always talk about it and, uh, you know, just try to stay as positive as possible and lean on everybody. Um, that's why I like the community uh, kind of take because it's like it's not one person like feeling the, the pain, right? It's like mm -hmm. everybody's in it. So let's let's kind of talk about it. Um, so uh, in I've heard, uh, I don't know if this has got to you, um, but you have like one of the coolest like unofficial AKAs with a lot of the partners that I work with uh, in the industry. Do you know? Do you know what your unofficial AK? <laughs> I don't know. One I uh, that came. Uh, I don't even know who coined it. Who started it? <laughs> Some, someone tell me if so I can find it. <laughs> I was, so, so I was. I was working. <laughs> John Wick be like, who is it? <laughs> I, was, I was working several rooms, and and they're like, that's the that's the mayor of cannabis. That's Carlo. He's the mayor. Of, of Maryland and I was like yeah he kind of yeah yeah okay I can see that <laughs> uh, the uh, official mayor of cannabis is like Safita <laughs> just to put that out there <laughs> yeah maybe, maybe I'm like if anything maybe an admin or <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I mean I, I, I thought I thought it was cool um especially I remember I was um uh I was by the baseball stadium in, 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 in downtown Baltimore. And I think you were working uh, the patio. Like there was a bunch of people and they were trying to talk to you. And uh, and it was hot. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go sit over here for a second. <laughs> and some someone came up to me. I don't remember who was like, that's Carlo over there. Um, like he's, he's the, he's a mayor of cannabis, right? Can you intro me to Carlo? I saw you talking to him a second ago. And I was like, Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then I was like, "Oh, wow, this this is cool. This is cool." Um, but yeah, I never brought it up to him. I thought it was I thought it was great. It's even cooler that you probably didn't know everyone refers to you as. as <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, like definitely um, the community part. Uh, I think when you're doing this emerging market stuff, right? Like when a lot of things are so great. Um, both from policy um, and even SOPs, right? There's not a lot of um, like winning recipes to follow, right? Yeah. So just being able to lean on other people, uh, other people's thought leadership, um, you know, someone even just has that extra two, three years of experience. Uh, it's ultimately why for me it matters to just have um, not necessarily as many people in the room, but uh, I feel like uh, we definitely need more people in the room uh, as, as where we stand right now, right? Um, when it comes to, again, uh, really just helping people make their dreams happen, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, man, I, I feel you. Um, you know, like I said earlier, like the community aspect is very important to me um and a sense of community and it always has been and in everything that, that i've done um and then that's what i really appreciated and was kind of drawn to when i saw that you were leading with community first um and your intent was like information and networking um so you know that that's what um myself and the curie team thought you know was really kind of magical um and, and, and kind of just to, to kind of reiterate too, and then kind of seeing how that's also playing in, to a little bit in Jersey and seeing you playing into New York. Um, it was like, all right, let's go. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad I'm a friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, man, you, know, uh, you and a bunch of like homies you've connected me with have been like super cool to be honest. And, uh, yeah. I'm glad you all have started meeting some of the, the folks who have been supporting me here in Ireland. So, um, yeah, no, nah, so uh, same thing here, basically. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to find, um, you know, someone who also believes in just, um, you know, the true spirit of, like, being an organization uh, more than just a company. Um, and yeah. Being, like, uh, a group of people and that, that do business in, in different places. And um, we should be um, doing things that are more impactful than uh, just, you know, uh, selling our products.
Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. You know, we, um, our Kiri team is growing and um, is, is, is very scattered, um, you know, in a good way, like uh, logistically, you know, we have many different folks in many different areas uh, in the U.S. and in, you know, in Canada. Um, so, you know, we, we all don't have the luxury of, of being in the same room at, at all times. Um, and so we have these check-ins and these all hands kind of meeting. And we always kind of take this moment when it comes to cannabis to kind of just breathe in a little bit and take in like, everybody is taking part of history being made. And like, how cool is that? Like, mm -hmm. like we could revisit this conversation 10 years from now. I should be like, do you remember when, uh, remember when we were helping Maryland out? Like, mm -hmm. get started and like, you know, the social equity folks, remember those dispensaries that we built? Like, I don't know, it's, um, I'm like super excited about, um, about that and always kind of, you know, as crazy as the day gets or whatnot, just to kind of take back and just kind of realize like, this is fun. Like we're doing some, like, you know, yes, yeah, so there are stressful parts of it, but when you look at this overall, like this is revolutionary, like just everything that's happening. And we are fortunate to kind of also go along for the ride. Yeah, man. Like, um, you know, definitely, I think, you know, having organizations that are, I mean, you know, it goes back to, to, to why I think that inclusion and why dream uh, needs to exist is that, you know, ultimately organizations should reflect like their communities as a whole, right? And, and I think that's how you solve problems, um, you know, with as much input as possible that, that matters, right? Yeah. So that, you know, for me, like in, inclusion, really does build better organizations, uh, builds better products. Um, and so it's something that, uh, you know, we need to continue to promote so that, you know, organizations can ultimately serve people. Right? <laughs> so for, for me, it's like, um, you know, just, yeah, just, just the more successful our industry is, uh, the better it is for every individual involved, even to the people who are our, our patrons, right? To all the cannabis consumers out there. Um, I think it's a better outlook for them to, to have, uh, you know, their, their choice of product, their choice of shop, um, their choice of experience, yeah. right? And then ultimately, you know, there's so much we could do um, if, if we make a more successful community, right? Where, where more people are at the table um, that, that have the input that, from the mileage that they've traveled, right? Uh, from the communities they bring. So... Yeah, thank you guys for like supporting all this stuff in the state, by the way, <laughs> and really riding with this because you know I know a lot of it uh, from your typical point of view per se. You know, there's there's really uh, like no ROI like for, for a lot of these things. You know, when uh, uh, you know, the goal it really is just to to build. So I appreciate you all. And um, I mean, at the end of the day, I believe like you know people who do well will do well. So I think there's always that. Um, yeah. But yeah, man, really like um, appreciate y'all for believing the vision here uh, for Dream. Oh yeah, man, um, I I dig it. I I support it, um, and glad to help out um, wherever we can. Um, oh yeah, dude. Um, you know, for one of the cohorts you taught, um, uh, or really just a whole general group, I think uh, now that Maryland's finally finished the the full uh, lottery, we have four out of the 22 that mm -hmm. got licensing. Um, and, that, and out of that 22, if you remember, uh, 16 decided to apply. Yeah. Uh, so all 16 of those passed um, amazingly. And then now we're at four of those 16, um, you know, are moving on to the next phase. So uh, just again, yeah, man, there's a, uh, you know, just to the last thing you mentioned, I just wanted to bring that up as well, is that, you know, my hope is that, you know, we're talking to these folks and they're like at their 10th, 20th, 100th dispensary in like 10 years, <laughs> and just, you know, and like, it would be so sick just to even be any part of that story, small or big. Yeah. And the people that were in those rooms, the, in the classroom setting, uh, I mean, the passion for cannabis a plant being an entrepreneur like all that was like really nice and exciting to see and 
I I liked kind of at the toward the end where everyone had bonded. Um, you know, the networking aspect kind of magically happened, and people understood that. Right now, if we say we all were to get a license, like we're not competitors right now. We all need to lean on each other right now, and we need to help get established. Um, and in the event that we do not get a license, we still love this industry. So I liked how the networking happened because they still might have an opportunity to still be a part of it or, you know, partner with someone else that uh, got a license or, you know, whatnot. So the, those rooms were, and those courses, I, I thought were, were really good. And it's also from being a part from the teaching aspect of it and kind of seeing the whole process go through, you know, um, I remember one of, uh, one of the events that I really liked is that, okay, everyone had turned in their application and now it's a waiting game. And then, you know, dream, you guys reached out to us and we're like, Hey, we're gonna do this holiday juke joint and we're going to pretty much invite all the folks that applied. They're waiting. It's the holidays. Let's come have a brew, come have a smoke, and let's just hang out. Um, and it was it was really nice because it was just this moment of pause and kind of like still embrace the community and cannabis. Um, so you know that just kind of went into the bucket of of what what I really like about what you and Dream are like doing for the community. Yeah, definitely. And, um, it's funny because you know. Um... Usually I'm talking about like momentum and build, 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 build. <laughs> but it is really nice to every once in a while just like take take a, a moment to breathe and um, just remember where you are and where you need to go and remember it's um, uh, like a marathon. That's why I got that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yes, you know, uh, that's, that's why it's there. It's like the reminder that like, hey, this is a, a long haul and um, yeah, you got to stop, yeah. um, take a break and, and build with people. Um, and I, I want to add you know, for everyone that's watching and listening is, so this juke joint, there was a guest appearance DJ by Carlo <laughs> uh, <laughs> playing some old school tunes, which is really cool too. And uh, if I remember correctly, I think some of that footage might be on uh, Project Dreams Instagram. So check that, check that out. But yeah. yeah um, well, shout out to uh, Crucial Culture, uh, you know, for, for, for the, uh, really the, um, coming up with the whole spirit of everything so <laughs> um yeah. gotta, we got to figure out how to do an, uh something before the summer and <laughs> to be <laughs> so yeah i think um yeah <laughs> gotta think, that'll, be, that'll be something we got we got to put on the on the plate <laughs> totally totally uh yeah i'll be there <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're they're fun. They're great. They're informative. Uh, the music is really good. The food's really good. So I'm 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 in. Um, so Carla, I have, a, I have a question for you um, on on the more personal side. So all of us are brought here to this industry and what we do because of one thing, and it's the plant, right? Um, do you mind uh, talking about your passion for the plant and how the plant relates to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely love including. Um you know, uh, cannabis within my, uh, I guess, lifestyle, right? Everything from fun to relaxation. Uh, but a big part of it as well has actually been um, this ability to uh, help me get off of prescription medication for my chronic pain. Um, you know, it's something that uh, I deal with uh, literally every second. Um, and being on prescriptions throughout the day actually made it very hard to like really do anything, um, especially um, be a startup founder. Uh, but with cannabis, it's, you know, uh, it's able to bring, you know, some quality of life back. Um, it's not perfect. Life is far from perfect, but I'm able to at least continue to chase. Uh, thanks. The, uh, thanks for sharing. Um, I'm always, I always like to kind of know, especially people that, I talk to a lot, you know, like what, what their passion is. And thanks for sharing to everyone, everyone listening. Um, you know, my, my journey with the plant, you know, is really interesting. Like not uh, as very young age, not knowing what it is and then experimenting with it and finding it to 
not be all the bad things that people said it was like you know and it's like oh yeah don't do that because it's like it's gonna ruin your your life or your thought process and whatnot but like having a curb certain ailments or you know it just wasn't i couldn't see how it was any of the bad things anybody was saying and i was like why is everyone lying to me or just lying about it um but then finding my path to it to actually kind of keep me level at it or help me kind of function and really just kind of high stress situations or sleep even um you know it's kind of been my 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 path to it but um you know everyone that dabbles in it kind of has their own thing whether it's like social personal both social personal um but all in all just thank you for sharing that it you know i was was curious it's not not something i ever asked you um so with that um let's talk about you know the rest of the year um with with project dream what's what do we have to look forward to yeah just uh making sure that we got um a lot of coursework ready and lined up um that will help you know again uh, accelerate the process for folks to be you know successful and ultimately resilient cannabis founders um and then also, uh, as you mentioned, for, uh, you know, a couple of pauses, <laughs> some, 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 some breaks, you know, <laughs> to, to commune and vibe. And then, um, you know, I think that pretty much takes us to a point where we're in Maryland that we're looking at uh, supporting probably the next round of, <laughs> of licensing, uh, I'm sure. So, you know, um, hopefully we get folks um, to where they need to get to this year and then support the next round of folks and then um maybe mature everyone that's come through this year i imagine um once we get to 2025 awesome mm-hmm. um cool so i want to wrap this up by um asking another question uh, about yourself so i know you are carlo of project dream but I also know that you have another project um, called Kuya that you're involved in. And um, do you want to give everyone like a very kind of high level of what Kuya is? Yeah. So uh, like a lot of folks in the cannabis industry, um, I, I do have a project within that serves uh, the space. We're a cannabis uh, consumer data platform. Uh, what we focus on is trying to make data as easy as possible for business leaders and marketers. Uh, and that also has a consumer platform that we'll be launching with it as well. Um, it's a way for people to find savings, experiences um, digitally. And, you know, we think, uh, and, you know, partly, uh, you know, with my, even my own personal experience, I feel like uh, there's so much still to be uncovered through math and science. Um, you know, combining that, what we know, you know, that we derive from the, the cultural aspects of cannabis, right? So, you know, we just want to be one of the folks to, to take what we're nerdy about and provide like a really dope solution just to make uh, better outcomes for, you know, like everyone around the cannabis space. Because like, I think if um, the organizations have the information they need, um, they'll pretty much be able to serve people like me, I think, better. Yeah, so. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I think a lot of us feel that uh, it's great that we have access. There's a lot of cool products now. So let's keep that moving forward and really try to make the experience uh, better, try to make uh, outcomes a lot more accurate. Uh, so there's something that's important in cannabis that maybe isn't as large in uh, uh, other uh, material goods, per se. So uh, for me, the, you know, being able to bring math and science uh, and culture uh, as a solution would be amazing. Awesome, yeah, so data, right? It's like, it's a word I feel like it's kind of thrown around a lot and a lot of people hear it, but then like sometimes people don't stop to kind of question like, what is it that I'm doing with my data or how am I using my data or like, what can I do with my data? Uh, Cause it can definitely help you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so awesome, I'm, I'm really excited to see like 
you know, what Kuya is about to offer um, to everybody. Yep. Um, try to de uh, demystify the science and art behind data. <laughs> there you go. There's your tagline right there. <laughs> um, so, Carlo, walk me through Carlo's entrepreneurial journey. I mean, because you, oh, you are a true entrepreneur. Walk me through it. Um, so for me, like doing, uh, my own thing was always something there, even when I was like really, really young. So it's like an itch that's, that, um, I felt like, um, what it was that, that never went away. So it's something I knew that always come to me. So once I started, you know, getting opportunities to learn more about the startup space while working, um, in more enterprise tech, um, you know, that, that was like one part of it. And then started having more startup customers and seeing their life and what they were doing and the projects they were working on really drove that itch forward. And then um, I was able to do something like really cool with a homie who at the time was at Google. It's really, um, it's, it's funny now we're both working um, even deeper in uh, AI machine learning and language modeling. Um, but, uh, you know, one of my homies back in the day, we had a, dance app <laughs> um and that was really cool we were a two-person team we had like fifty thousand unique visitors um we're developing an android app had an apple app um in which we already had uh, close to six thousand users and um it pretty much took 18 months uh, i believe to get to the six um the six thousand users uh, again as a two-person team in, in uh, a very 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 niche uh i guess industry or market as if you call it um you know or, or, or our community and scene but yeah it was like really cool to to be able to have that experience um unfortunately when things shifted in policy um you know, uh, some things when it came to our API access just didn't give us the full capacity we needed to provide the service. So we moved on from that project. Um, but cool, we learned a lot, right? We we got a good volume. We were able to um, start building a lot of other things. Um, um, and, you know, for us having like to, you know, I, I was, you know, focused on business development aside. Um, he was, uh, you know, the developer. And just having that dynamic was great too. So it gave me a lot of lessons um, into what we do now, basically. <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, take took a lot of that, and um, now I'm in software again. And between that was uh, some consulting and just trying to really see what was like the next cool thing uh, and the next big thing to code. Awesome, man! Uh, right on. Well. The journey continues, right? So <laughs> now, it, now it's what are you building next? Um, yeah. So with that, man, thanks for thanks for joining. Um, I'm so glad that we got to connect and just kind of talk about you know everything that you're working on. Um, is there any last bit of information that you want to say to before you sign off? Um, Project Dream Social is the Instagram, and it's the piece that gets updated uh, the quickest. Um, if there's anything that you're curious about what we do here in Maryland and with Dream, uh, we'd just love for you to follow, support, uh, or um, get in touch. If you message the Instagram, uh, I'll, I'll get it. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Carlo. Cool, cool. All right. Peace. <laughs>